Evening, boys and girls. Here, my Sunday night live uh, in association with the Watford Football Club, former players club. Uh, head on over to facebook.com forward slash Taylor Made Players for that fantastic group of players. Um, as always, I'm joined by my esteemed colleagues, uh, the Canadian Darren and Dino, um, the Chelsea duvet wearing young man. <laughs> evening, mate. Evening, boys. <laughs> It could be Brentford, it could be Birmingham. We really, really don't know. Just put the comments um, what you think. He was sort of refereeing <laughs> last week, so um, there we go. Right, let's. We've got plenty of comments. Um, so what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to just go screen share it because we've got a lot um, to get through. Um, so we'll get cracking straight away. Just before um, Mr. Chris, evening mates. Says hi all. Mel Williams, hi all. Poor performance yesterday. Um, Greg Thicker, evening, evening, mate. Um, Mr. Thorpe, evening. Um, good evening, fellas from Stan B. And uh, Greg says Billich is boring. Right. OK, so on that note, um, let's get straight on um, with the debate. Yes, I was young. I was like them. What fair that's it. That's it for me. Right. OK. So, guys and girls, thank you ever so much for putting your topics in. We've had a massive, massive um, injection of topics. So they're all pretty much around the same one. But we'll try and get try and answer every single person who has commented in this. Firstly, Gary Iron. Um, Gary, once again, lovely to see you again yesterday, mate. He says, um, I don't want another change. But if the club wants promotion, then change if not stick with Billet for next season and get the plans in he wants for promotion push. Um, obviously, guys and girls, comment um, on that topic straight away. Um, go on then, boys. Um, what do you? Um, what's your thoughts on that? And obviously, I've, there's a couple more Billet ones I'll throw in as well. But what do you guys reckon? Yeah, for me, I think I would really like the club to stay with Billet. I don't want him to to go. Yeah, yesterday was not great, and in the last, you know, the last few. Um, like anything, all managers are judged on results, and we know that. And that, some of them haven't been good enough. But uh, we're not out of it yet. I think we've got 11 games left, and we're four points off. Um, but yesterday, I think the disappointing thing for me yesterday was the first half in particular. You know, Because Billich has said before the game, this is a must-win game. And yet, I mean, some of the lineup I wasn't completely thrilled with. And... and Cathcart didn't have a good game yesterday, but I think what really is kind of sad in the modern world is that, yeah, Cathcart didn't have a good game yesterday, but he's had a lot of good games this past couple of seasons, and sometimes you have an off game. And and, and the trouble is with social media now, if you have an off game, you get slammed for it. Like, I'm, you know, it was a poor performance, yes, but having said that, to me, I was surprised that Cath, uh, Gaspar wasn't in his place. I, I would like to see Billich stay. Um, and I'm glad that Aspria got uh, a run out as well, because uh, to me, the, the thing that was interesting yesterday was watching your show yesterday there, Pidge, and Duncan was saying apparently the reason Aspria was left out was because he wasn't performing in training. And yet you always hear people saying how electric Saar is in training. Well, for me, I'd rather have somebody who doesn't perform in training, but's electric on the field. And with the greatest of respect to Saar, he hasn't been doing it. Uh, and Aspria has, but for me, I'll, I'll let Dino chill, I mean, for sure. But yeah, I, I want him to stay. I think he's an excellent coach and I think he will get it right. Uh, you know, we need to have some patience at this club. We've had so much change and I think most fans are sick of it. So that's just my take from uh, from Canada. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we we got to stop this sacking policy. I think it's ridiculous. It's even in question about him going. I was chatting with some fans when we were leaving, even though it weren't great yesterday. I can't say it was because it was one of the worst games I've seen. But like Darren just said, it's not the end of the world. We're only four points behind. I think we just got to have a bit of consistency. We haven't had it all year. We've got to go on a little winning streak. We've got to win three or four games in a row to get back in this position. That's the only real thing. Um, I think we got to be a bit more adventurous because every team's going to play like this now. You could see from the first minute, Preston are already wasting time and you can see it's frustrating the hell out of us. The fans get on the back, everything. So we've got to find a way of breaking that. And yeah, that's it really. I, I think we got to not press the panic button yet. And now you've got, like I said, I've, 
in all honesty, I really don't want to go up this year. I really don't. If we make the playoffs, of course, you want to win it. Absolutely. 100%. You're there. You might as well go for it. But to be honest, I really don't want to go up because I think it would be worse than the season before when we were there. And I think we really, really will struggle. And and the Potsos are just serious. It keeps working all the time. So I think we need to fail, really, to go a couple more steps better. And hopefully it might change the Potsos model a bit. But you can never tell with them, you know. I could look at the news tomorrow and Bedic is gone, but I hope he isn't. I, I really do want to keep him for at least one more season. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. To answer the question, just before a big shout out to Michelle Mercer, um, the lovely wife of Keith, the legend Keith Mercer. So, uh, um, uh, Michelle, uh, hello to you and just give a big hello out to um, Keith and hope he's uh, on the mend and um, hopefully well. Um, so, yeah, definitely give him a big shout out to the legend Keith Mercer. Um, yeah, to answer Gary's question, yeah, I, I would certainly stick, and that's what Dave's saying now. He says, good point, lads. Keep Billich for three seasons. Let him bring in his players. And if we end up, oh, lead to, at least we can say Billich, get, uh, give Billich time. Thing is, though, Dave, and I can see where you're coming from, you, if you make a change, but you say make the, the, you know, the likes of Norwich and Middlesbrough have made a change, but they've only made one change. And so have we, and it hasn't it technically it hasn't worked for us. So same, make another change. Clearly, the, the the facts have backed up that we make a third change, it never works out. Whenever we've done that, it has not worked out. You know, arguably the well, we made two changes. It's worked out. This, in this case, it's not all Edwards's fault. I think looking back at it now, because even Billets can't get a tune out of these players. I mean, you could get Pep Guardiola in there, and I don't think he'll get a don't get a, get a, a song or dance out of the, the, some of these players. I think there's a lot of passengers there. Um, we need, I think, as well. The, some of the players have got into this habit of if I don't play for this manager, they'll get the sack, and it's been like that for about six six odd years now. If they're just down tools and not bother, they're just gonna they they know that the Potsos are just gonna push the panic button. Yes, I completely understand that they want to be in the Premier League. The money's there. We can't sustain being in the championship too long because we will be falling further, further behind, and we'll be back to square one when we were after. We were basically bringing in homegrown players, looking to finish mid-table. I can see where people are coming from from that point of view. But going up, being a yo-yo team, um, no one's going to enjoy the Premier League. We need to get we need to get some sort of solid base together. And we should have really made the right appointment in the summer. If clearly, if Edwards was not the right appointment, we should have got Billet in the summer. Or we should have got someone in the summer and said, right, you've got at least two years to work at it. You look look at what Forrest have done. They've clearly they were banging trouble um at the start of the season under Cooper. They handed fair play to the owner. He handed him a big contract and said, look, he's our man. We're gonna we're gonna stay with him. And they reacted. They got, went on that big unbeaten run and they've got themselves not completely out of trouble, but they got themselves off for where they were initially. The players have always responded. The players know that he's not going anywhere and he's here to stay. So they either buck up their ideas or they get shipped out. It's a similar sort of thing here. We need to start giving a head coach some time, a bit more faith, and let him just coach the team. Because it's happened so much over the last few years where we've literally, once we've on a little bit of a run... We've just said, right, we'll fuck him off and get someone else. And Billich is a good coach. He's proven that before. Just these players. The thing is, Edwards is doing so well at the scum because he's got a team full of players with plenty to prove, no egos, and he's and he's not under serious pressure there. With us, he was under pressure from the get-go. You do this or you're out. And the problem is, though, he had no time to really make his mark. Okay, I said at the time, I thought it was probably the right decision because I thought he was out of his depth. But we need to start giving um, coaches some time. So I would think, to a uh, short thing to answer Gary's question, yeah, we should stick with Billets for next season and let him have the players he wants. Um, I just think it's just absolutely ridiculous. But I'll get on, on to a few um, points. Dave said, Pidge, it can't get any worse than it is now, mate. You obviously weren't here in 1991, fella. So, yes, it can get even worse, mate. Um, we need someone like Wilder to kick him up the arse. Um, too lazy. Um, Kusek says, I like Billich, but his player selection yesterday had seriously be questioned. Kafkart right back, a rouge in place of Davis and Espria on the bench. Yeah, no, there, there is an argument for that, mate. Um, Greg Thika says, I don't care if we don't make the playoffs, but I'd rather not make them. And we've got, had a good go at, uh, as it 
rather than just a cautious nonsense crap. Yeah, no, it's a good point, mate. Um, Mr. Kid says, um, Gino was not there yesterday. Apparently, it doesn't surprise me. Um, Michael says, we've got to keep the manager. Uh, Freddie, um, even Freddie says, that's what uh, why we didn't let a goal in, Chris. Um, Dave, uh, what you don't get us next season, there will be three new Premier League teams who have dropped into championships. It will be even harder to go up. We need Premier League money. That's the priority. Um, any clubs, that's the priority to get Premier League money, mate. Billich is a good coach. What's he won? What's he done? Well, you know, what has Wilder <laughs> won, mate? Um, you're putting, you're putting <laughs> Billich in front of Wilder. Sorry, Billich is a better coach than Wilder, mate. Um, <laughs> that's, that's just a fact, mate. He's he's coached, he's got his better teams than thing. And Wilder didn't cover himself much in glory in his second season up, up in um top flight with Sheffield United. That's the reason why they got rid of him. And uh, as soon as he turned up at Borough, he wanted to go to the Burnley job. He wouldn't rule himself out of the Burnley job. So he's hardly one that he's going to be like a Marco Silva, mate. You know, if the bigger job comes on, you he'll jump ship the minute he minute he gets a sniff at it, mate. So, uh, no, I'd rather have the ex-Norwich manager than Wilder, to be fair, mate. Um, if, I, if I'm honest, he's a bit more loyal. Um, right, okay, so there is serious questions back and forth about this. I'll go to go to the one of the other ones which are about Billets. Robbie, I will, uh, Robbie and um, Robert, I will go, come to yours very shortly. Chris has put one up as well. Um, right, Jim says, What is our long term plan? Got rid of Edwards after 10 games, I suppose, because they were not happy with that. What was being produced on the pitch, obviously. He says, Yet yeah, 25 games later, we're producing football for. <laughs> Insomniacs, the silence from the CEO is deafening. Um, go on, Dan, you take that, mate. It's from Tony. So, yeah, cheers, Tony, for the topic, mate. Yeah, no. I well, what's our long term plan? Yeah, pretty much. I don't think they know. I don't. <laughs> you can't tell with the Potsos, can you? What's a long term plan with them? They don't give a, a manager a season. So, how can there really be a long term plan, really, with this, this team? <laughs> I'd like to keep Billich for like two or three years, really. But, you know, we could add six, seven managers by then. How can there be a, a long-term plan? You know, we're going to... What they want is be a yo-yo club up or down. Uh, uh, to be honest, I can't really tell you what a long-term plan would be. Honestly, it'd be... Obviously, they'd like to get to the Premier League. But, you know, he's, he's got... There's, a, there's more Deadwood in this squad, I'm afraid. You know... Um, You've got to get rid of them. I'm afraid Guthcart's one of them. Cleverly's one of them. Sar's got to go. I don't even care if he don't sign a new contract. Bugger off. You've been absolutely shocking, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know. We need more leaders there now. Uh, yeah, honestly, I can't really tell you a long-term plan because <laughs> it's, it's tough when you can't have a manager in long enough to build a squad. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I can't really answer that question. <laughs> You've yeah. done a pretty good job already, mate. Sorry, Darren, go on there, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was just looking at what Freddie just said there and he said we didn't spend it when we went in the Prem. And I, I said it always goes back to, it's a real, it was like a pinnacle. When we won the semi-final against Wolves in the FA Cup, after that, in the run-up to the final, the team lost form. And a lot of clubs do that. Like my buddy who's a Newcastle fan. Once Newcastle got to the League Cup final, their league form has gone off. Happens a lot for clubs. But once that summer we got spanked in the cup final, and there was no shame in that, I mean, with all the superstars of Man City. But I honestly felt then that, that I've always felt this, that the Pozos got greedy. We had our best finish in the Premier League, we got to a cup final, and it was as if to say, well, okay, Mr. Gracia, you can, you know, you don't, you've done, done well enough, we'll, 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 you know, yeah. we get, we got Dawson. And, and not much else. We got Welbeck, I think, on, on like a loan or whatever it was. But it was shocking lack of investment. Ever since then, it's hurt us. And there seems to be this con. I mean, this this January window, they, they have changed it around with a couple of really good, uh, you know, d defensive signs and Port House and Hoot yeah. and Hoot. But but generally, the, the, it seems that the, the, the plan has been to look overseas for some exciting young forward talent and, and they've done that well to be fair but defensively up until this January they've always been a little bit tight-fisted and we've had an aging squad and now it's, and, now it's bit... and when it when it bites you in the arse like that the, th the, the thing is with this league it's just like the weekend's results like Stokes spanked Sunderland 5-1 it's a tough league to get out of 
It really is. It's a good league. It's a really good competitive league, but you've got to be at it every week. And yeah. as you, you know, like you said, mate, you get teams like Preston who are not, they're not daft. They come down and uh, they got some big lads in the back and they just make it tough for you to play. It's tough. The long-term plan, I think, that, yeah, the Pozos want to go back to the top flight. But the trouble is, I think they got greedy a few years back and they don't understand that you do have to invest sometimes in... You have, you have to splash some cash sometimes. You can't do it all on cheeky little, you know, Udinese loans or whatever. Sometimes you've got to put your put the cash down. And I think that's the criticism of them. The second part of that is we never bloody hear anything from them. And I know some fans say, well, you don't have to, but I think you do. You know, it's nice to hear what their plans are. And we hear nothing. So it's uh, the communication that the club has been shot for seasons on by the term. Anyway, I'll shut up. <laughs> Let you no, 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 you, no, please, mate, because I'm going on. We we are trying to get moves on. For some reason, it was echoing his end, so he's going to try and look. I, it's something wrong with the. It's not in personally. I just think it's, uh, it's happened a couple of times in my end as well. So um, okay. we'll, we will be getting him on, guys. So we'll get his thing. Well, let's see if we can see if it works now. You all right, mate? Hello. Is that better? Yeah. That's much better, mate. Yeah, no, this wasn't you, mate. That's why I was personal messaging you in the thing. For some reason, every time Darren talked, it was echoing. But no, you're absolutely fine now, mate. Um, I'll, let me read a couple of comments out, mate, and I'll get you straight on, fella. Um, mm -hmm. He said, it's starting to get depressing. That's from um, Sam Howes. Um, Halsey, evening from Glasgow Airport, Mr. Uh, Hiles. Hey. Hey. Yeah, he's pretty fly. Um, uh, we've got... Oh, one said we, yeah, yeah, he loves it, really. Um we have 11 individuals, not a team. That's the problem. Recruitment has been poor overall. That's from Robbie Allen. Um, Dave said, Dino, who cares if we're a yo-yo club? Well, personally, I do. Um, at least we yeah. get to see the top teams at the Vic. And we have more cash and track better players. Problem is, though, Dave... But where are they? Point, <laughs> I think so. Uh, I'll play devil because advocate. We're looking from Dave's point of view, which is perfectly valid, that, OK, we'll go up and down, up and down. Problem is, though... How much did we actually spend last time we were in the Prem? Sweet FA. You yeah, know, we don't have to sp exactly. We don't have to spend hundreds of things. How you spend it and who you spend it on. But we hmm. were, we bought crap last time. And where are these really good players? Yeah, where are they? They've all gone. If they're what really good, we'll be top of the league by bloody Burnley. <laughs> exactly, right. Um, Fred is <laughs> saying sacking managers like Ari Gracia and Isco... Um, <laughs> What's well, ridiculous? If we kept the, uh, either of them, we would be in the prem. If we keep a manager, they would be able to build a team and the a game plan. He just says, "I'm going to be honest. We will lose to Luton um, two to three now. I bloody hope not, Freddie. But the way it's going, mate, it's looking it's looking really bad. Um, there's no team mentality under under Isco. There was a clear team. Um, I think we're staying in the championship. Unfortunately, there's a serious rebuild needed. And Mr. Thika said he's gone in the summer, whatever. Massive uh, manager reboot uh, coming. Manga, head coach, out of contract players leaving, loans returning. And Mr. Ross Morgan's on. Evening, Ross. The <laughs> Ross the Tron's on. So hopefully, hopefully he's all <laughs> well and good. Big shout out to Ross there. Um, yeah, moves. Um, the Billich situation. I'll throw in another comment because they're roughly around the same sort of thing. Michael, please saying um, keep Billich, allow him to get his own players. The manager, Mary Garan, needs to stop. A lot of people, and we've already been talking about, a lot of people are fed up with this manager, Mary Garan, saying, are we, are we or not making the playoffs? And like Gary Iron originally said, mate, um, should we stick or twist with Billich? And I think we've all unanimously said we need to hold on to a manager and stop sacking them. But what, what's your take on that? 100% we've got to stick with him. Stick with him. Well, it's, you know, this guy came in halfway, not, well, not halfway, but, you know, only just a little bit into the season. Let, let, let's just remember something, people, here. Village hasn't even picked his strongest starting 11 yet, if I'm right in thinking, because half of them are still in the sodding treatment room. <laughs> so, why, why get rid of a guy? What? Why? We are not good enough to go up. This season, we are simply not good enough. If we were, we'd be right where Burnley are right now. We have not turned it on enough. Not turned it on. And to be honest, <laughs> you know, some of the players have got to take a long, hard look at themselves because they're partly to blame. Plus the sodding, blinking medical staff who can't sort out hamstring injuries um, or cause hamstring injuries but there is no way you sack Billich now 
we've got 11 games left. Yeah. If you sack someone now, if you, if, sorry, if we were to sack Billings now, you'd have to, you'd have to get someone to hit the ground running. And that means literally walking in and saying, this is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to do it for the next 11 games. So if you want to get promoted, this is how it's going to be. Well, if the Pozzo, if Pozzo believes that, then he needs his bloody head examining because this, is, <laughs> the, right now the team ain't good enough. Technically on paper, it is good enough, but we're not yeah. doing it on the pitch. We are good enough moves. It's just the fact that the players, like you said, you just hit the nail on the head. We are good enough to get promotion. Problem is, though, the players mentally and just application-wise are just simply not good enough, mate. Sorry to jump yeah. in, in between, no, mate. Go on. No, 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 that's fine, mate. That's fine. Uh, by the way, I know Halsey's on, so I'd like uh, just, just like to point out... Um, hang on. Yeah, there we go. It's a Watford one this week. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> just to clear that matter up. There we go. You zoomed in on it for me as well. <laughs> there we go, mate. mate. <laughs> Extra <laughs> angles, mate. Different camera angles, mate. We've got VAR yeah. camera angles here, mate. You know, no expense oh. said. <laughs> uh, well, also moved. Um, what what do we do? Reckon Dino's got this evening. <laughs> oh, <laughs> probably. Uh, I'd say Scouse twattery after what's happened this afternoon. <laughs> he's he's cheering <laughs> cheering the mighty toffees, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, getting worse. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Go to see it at last, Moobsy. By the way, that's from Halsey. Yes, yes, thank you, mate. Good. Right, yeah. okay, technical Darren. Glitch. Yeah, the, the technical glitch, yes, that's what, that's what you call it. Right, okay. <laughs> Darren, should Saar be dropped? That's from Robert Ingram. Cheers, Robert. Thanks for the um, comment, mate. Right, no. okay, we probably all answered that already, but let's just straight away, should no. he be dropped? I would have said, I mean, they're different kind of players, but I would give a spree or a chance to start and put Saar on the bench. Saar, is, this is the, the, the kind of oddity about that guy. He clearly has the talent. Everybody knows that. But he, he, how many good games, really good games, has he had this season? Couple, probably. Mm. You know, seriously. And it's not, I, I, I want people to understand, I, I've got nothing against the kid. I wish him nothing but the best. Billich says he's, he's, he's a pleasure to work with. I'm sure he is. But on the field, there's a sort of apathy about him. And he always looks miserable <laughs> facially. You know, he just <laughs> kind of sad. But he's clearly a talent, but he's not performing. And it's just, I think it's, he's just become one of those starters on the sheet before kickoff that hasn't, on merit, he shouldn't be there. He should not be there on performance. So for me, I think he should be dropped. It might even be a good thing for him from a pressure perspective. I don't know. But I would give somebody like Esprit a chance to get out there. I think uh, you can't say he's not had enough chances. He's been with the club a few years now. And... and uh, you know, for those who are young enough or old enough, I guess, to remember, John Barnes scored a wonder goal for England against Brazil many, many years ago. And a lot of his England career was kind of based upon that goal. And I look at Saar and think of his performance against Liverpool a few years back. And are we living on that kind of fantasy memory? Because he really has not performed that well. Not to say, you know, he's a bad kid, but I think it would be, I could see why we'd bench him and put a spreer in. That's my take. How about Dino? What do you think on that, mate? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Saar, but he frustrates the head out of me. He dives, he expects a foul every two seconds. The minute someone grabs him, it, it, he did one good thing. He nearly scored a wonder goal yesterday. The rest, he was bloody terrible. He had a great volley, it just went wide, but he was absolutely shocking. Mm -hmm. I think it'd give Billich a bit of. Um, I think it'd do Billich good to drop him just to send out a good sign to the Watford team going, hey, up, you know, because I think Saar takes it for granted. He's always going to be on the team sheet. So what if you're bloody sold? You don't deserve to start. You've been bloody rubbish. Um, I, I thought Asprilia come under a bit of fire yesterday, which is ridiculous, saying he'd go great. He was bloody mad at the match for me yesterday. <laughs> In the first second... In the first second of the game, he was attacking. He was positive. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. And he'd be first on the team sheet. I, I thought Casper was the friendly ghost was good. He should have. <laughs> that's, that's the one thing, Guff. That's the one thing, Guff. Um, Billy's got wrong. Guff got a right back. I'm sorry. Press the name for him. He's, yeah, he's, he's slow as anything, Guff got there. Not a right back. Me and Paul were saying. If you have a back three, Guff Carter will be fine there. You play him in the centre with 
the two centre back. Mm. He can't play right back. They aimed for him. He was giving the ball away. Like like I said, you c- maybe he should have changed tactics. He should have had three back and gone for it. Maybe yesterday, you know, Sprillia should have definitely started because he looked fresh. He looked good. Um, I think Davis should have probably started that other lad up front. I know his release cause is a uh, hundred million, but I don't see where they valued at him because he he's too weak. He really ain't good enough. I think loser will come into it. I'm not going to be too harsh on him. I still think he's finding his fitness. So I'm hoping a couple of games here come good now. But yeah, he should drop star. I think he'd give a I think it'd be good for Bilic and the team to go hey, up. He's not undroppable and all of us ain't safe. So and I thought it was harsh taking Morris off yesterday as well. It mm. should have been Guffcart before Morris, definitely, because at least Morris can attack and get up the line. But hey oh yeah, I'll definitely drop Sar to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, what do you reckon, Moves? Because the thing is, as well, Moves, I'll throw this to you. We've got Asa Belonga on the bench. I mean, we should have had Adam Mayo or um, bloody Blake, to be honest. They would have covered more threat. I mean, you, we were we actually said in the stands that you would have had more threat up front. than <laughs> Even though the Hornet got closer to the goal than some of those lot at, at full time. You know, yeah. Come on, mate. Uh, yeah, I'm still I'm still baffled as to what Asen Belonga's role is right now. Is he being brought in as a second striker? Is he it, what what is his position? Constantly giving him ten minutes at the end, he's not doing anyone any favors. He's not doing us any favors. Um, but I do think he is. I still think he's technically a bit too muscly for what we need right now. Um, I'm just I'm going to stand by that until I start seeing something different from the guy. In regards to Saar, I think I do agree with a lot with near enough everyone that I think it is time that he's pulled out the team. Um, apart, like you said, Dino, yesterday I was already celebrating when he whacked that shot and Jesus Christ, if it had gone in the bottom corner, I think the goal would have dismantled itself. He hit it that hard. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, you know, there's been too many mediocre performances from Saar lately, which hasn't helped us. Um, it, uh, one person said to me not so long ago, is Sars' problem down to that injury he picked up last season when Van der Beek broke his leg, technically? You know, is there a... Does he fear that it's going to happen again now? Maybe it's that. Maybe someone needs to say to him, look, you're just going to have to be a bit more braver and go for it. And if it happens, you know, take the consequences afterwards. But I don't... Um, yeah, I, I can't see how we could have um, how we can keep having him in the squad because or in the team because he's just, it, you know, when we came down last time, he was one of the main men. He was literally tearing the division apart, and right now, this is what he should be doing. And I don't like it that he's not doing it. So, uh, and also, I completely agree about why James. Why was James Morris sucked yesterday? That boy did nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing. He had a storm of a first half. You know, apart from the Preston player falling over and like he'd been shot by a frigging sniper, um, trying to get him booked. But he did absolutely nothing wrong. And I feel and I feel for the lad because it's not nice when that happens. I think that's what twice now it's happened. He's been hauled off at half time. You know. Feel for the boy, but you know, as we all say, learning curve for him, so make him stronger. But I agree with what Pidge said as well. I'd have put Adi Amo back on the bench. He he'd have done something. You chuck the shirt in for tw- for ten minutes, he'd have run ragged. So, um, but it, but overall, yes, I think it is time for him to be dropped. Mm. You imagine putting Blakey on for like ten minutes and just say, "Go on, lad, just don't worry about defending, just run at them." You imagine him yeah. and him and Esprit are running at them for the last 10 minutes. They'd be shitting themselves. Oh, God, yeah. You know, the, the crazy thing was, and I, I actually said this to people sitting around me yesterday, if we could have scored, Preston would not would not have known what to have done. Yeah. That's all it needed. We just needed to get a goal, whether it was, you know, a scrappy one, a, a worldie, or a free kick, or a penalty, just something like that. You know, if we could have just got one, I think personally we would have been all right because Preston really didn't offer us nothing yesterday. They, 
they were turning up for a point or smash and grab all three at the end, which I really thought they were going to do at one They're point. They're trying to do a commentary like the commentary did us this season as yeah. well when beat us 1 0. They tried to do a commentary, cat us on the counter attack. Um, with our myself, God knows how they didn't score at the end. Jesus Christ, God, man, if that honestly, if that had happened, that stadium would have emptied so fast. I don't think a washing machine could get could get emptied that quick. Well, I was laughing. I said, if Sar scores, I'm in the pond, and he almost fucking scored as well. <laughs> <laughs> I would have pushed Dino in on the way there anyway, so I wouldn't yeah. run off. I him run off. <laughs> No, it's, it is. I've got to be honest though, it is mega frustrating. I've seen some of these comments, and yeah, yeah, you know, we're, we're all angry at the minute. You know, there's no ifs, buts, or maybes about it. But you know, how do we fix it? I I really don't know. And uh, I was reliably informed today that um, a certain person by the name of Elton John was in the stands yesterday as well. Apparently, we're, they, they had to be kept very quiet, but I do believe he wasn't impressed. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, personally, I would have sent him down to the dressing room at half time. That would have bloody sorted them all out. Yeah, he wasn't sitting down and he was still standing, apparently. So, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, dude, uh, I guess we're right on that note. Boobs, you ready for the news? <laughs> oh, you bet I'm ready. You bet I'm ready. <laughs> Yes, hello, people. And for the next few minutes, forget about the men. Forget about Watford men. Good God, I'm on cloud nine right now because there's a date for your diary, people, because today was semi-final day. And yes, we played Wolverhampton Wanderers, ladies. Now everyone's saying it was a rerun of what happened in, in the men's in the FA Cup under Javi. Well, technically it was, because guess what? We're going to a final! Yes, people. We have done it. The girls have done it. And they did it in pure style. Winning 2-0 this afternoon down at Groves Vale. It was absolutely fantastic. Dubious about the first goal, whether it should have stood or not. But hey-ho, the Lino didn't, dis didn't, uh, didn't disagree. So it stood. We thank the Lino for his uh, help on that one. But no, like I say, what, an <laughs> what a game, what an atmosphere. It had everything today. What a semi-final should have. What a game of football should have. Girls taking the lead early. Great finish as always. They, they don't really do tap-ins. They only do screamers, basically. Um, <laughs> that was soon followed up by a second one. And then it soon became backs against the Wolves job in the second half because Wolves were really giving it absolutely everything from the kitchen sink thrown in as well, possibly a toilet door as well. You name it, they were throwing it at Watford. But they the girls just stood up and stood strong. And they have booked themselves a place in the FA Women's National League Cup final to be held on St George's Day. Yes, our patron saints, St George's Day. Excuse the bourbon. That might be the beer from earlier. Um, <laughs> the game takes place on Sunday, April the 23rd. OK, so I'm going to reiterate this and I'm going to keep reiterating it for a while because right now I'm absolutely buzzing. Sunday, April the 23rd, the game is being played at Burton Albion Football Club, so the Pirelli Stadium. So if you've not been there and you want to talk a stadium off, watching Watford Football Club, then come. Come on. Come come and watch. Because today we are going to be... Uh, thank you. Yes, it's always nice not to wear the deluded sweater of that lot. Um, <laughs> you get. <laughs> um yeah, it's going to be a great day out, a chance to win some seal. The girls got a chance to win some seal where they are 90 minutes away from doing it. But one thing I will say, we do not underestimate the power Nottingham Forest have behind them because right now they are flying. And in their semi-final today, they thrashed Portsmouth 5-0. So there is a little statement of intent sent by them. But we set out our own and, it's how we, and that's how we do it, by winning games. But honestly... I really, really want to see loads of people there for cup for cup final day. It would be great to have our end filled out. Now I'm waiting on more details to get released because <clears throat> I'm not sure how this is gonna. I'm not sure how it's gonna work out, but once we do, it'll all get posted out, and uh, you can 
you know, we'll be able to sort it all out from there. But quite frankly, I cannot wait. And this is nothing more than the girls deserve. Basically, it's a lot better than watching the goddamn men right now. Um, I thought you all might agree with that one. <laughs> but also today, I actually, uh, and I know he's not on tonight. Actually, actually, what's happened to the chief spell checker tonight? He said he was going to be on. Has he been in yet? Pidge? Um, no, I haven't seen him yet, mate. Um, I've, I've put the result right. and everything for him. Look, I, I, think, right, I, I think I might know where he is. I think he might be in the pub with Mr Higgins. Um, also today, I would just like to say a big shout out to Mr Higgins. It was wonderful to finally meet you, sir. Um, and like I say, he I, I know for a fact he enjoyed it because I saw him at the end just before he left and he said how much he loved it. So, Stuart, have a safe journey back to Ireland, mate. And um, it'd be great to catch up. When you next come over again, come over and make sure you come and watch the girls again as well. So, it'd be great to see you, buddy. Um, but... Just bringing myself back down to earth a little bit. Just a little, because I am still on an absolute monumental high. Uh, I've got to put the cup final to one side and the cup today to one side now. Because next weekend, the girls roar back into action straight into the league. Yes, that's right. We still have the league games to sort out and they're going to be coming thick and fast. If you don't believe me, check out www.watfordfc.com forward slash pictures forward slash women and you'll find them all there trust me it is going to be coming thick and fast and next weekend is an away game yes they are on the road they're finally going to leave grows the veil it feels like we've been there forever uh, recently with the amount of games but they're making the trip around the m25 down to gillingham yes now gillingham women are playing now at chatham fc so chatham fc next sunday is a destination It'd be great to see as many Hornets down there as possible because the girls appreciate the support and today they absolutely loved it, us roaring them on all the way to the very end and screaming and shouting when the full-time whistle went. <coughs> so next Sunday, 2 o'clock, Chatham Town FC, come and watch Watford women take on Gillingham. It's going to be an absolute humdinger of a game. I guarantee you that. <coughs> I've got to try and calm down here because I'm getting a bit too excited again. Um, I've got to thank Pidge for posting up the South Park score, as always, because it's always great to hear that Kenny's probably killed Cartman and everyone else has just fallen over laughing. Uh, but Hamilton yesterday, and a bit of non-league news for you. They drew nil-nil away at top of the table. Ebb's fleet, they're the great point there. Still trying to hunt down the playoff places, but I think now... It might just be a bridge too far for them, but as in the, as now we've seen with a change of manager at Hemel, absolutely anything is possible. So um, I don't know what we spoke about, but they've got a few more games to do it. But yeah, like I say, a good draw for them, and they go to Bath City on Tuesday night. So if you know anyone in the Bath City area, send the head on down there. It could be a good entertaining night. Um, but yeah, like I say, as for the girls. Well, we're going to a cup final and I seriously cannot wait. And I know I say it to you all every week, but please, if you have nothing to do on April the 23rd, come to the Pirelli Stadium in Burton, especially the Midlands Hornets. Midlands Hornets, if you're listening, I'm telling you now, Midlands Hornets, please, please, please come out that day and support the girls. It'll be great to have you. Uh, all there and cheering the girls on because I, I've got a sneaky feeling Nottingham Forest might bring a fair few with them. Um, and uh, we definitely want to be, uh, we, we definitely want our voices heard in more ways than one. So, uh, like I say, people, get that date in your diary. Let's have a day out. Bring all the family because it's a family day out. That's what the women's game is all about. It's all about fun, fair and great days. And trust me, this will be, be just like that as well. So, uh, if you're interested, stick it in your diary. Right, Darren, I saw you drinking that beer. We need to know what it is, mate, and what it is That's now. Cool. Well, first off, uh, cheers there, Moves, to the young ladies getting to the final. That's fantastic. 
I had this the other week, and it's such a good lager. I just keep getting it. Full Peril across the Atlantic from a local brewery in Calgary, and it really is arguably the nicest lager I've ever had, which is why I keep buying it. So I apologize to Ian for the predictability, but uh, it really is a good pint. And then when it comes to bottles of red, I've got this uh, Wins Shiraz from uh, from the land of Oz. The guy at the co-op liquor store recommended it to me. So uh, I'll be joining a bit of that later on. And that's the beer and wine. Cheers. <laughs> Right, boys, um, we're going to shoot off. Yeah, cheers, Darren. Nice one, mate. Nice tip all there. Um, yeah, massive thank you to all the comments, guys and girls. Um, a Titanic effort, it goes down well. That's from Halsey. Yeah, no, well done, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, right, okay, guys and girls, we're going. Um, but obviously, we'll be back on Friday night to preview the weekend's game. Um, t- a tough, tough trip away to QPR. So we'll see, mm-hmm. see you back for that. So that'll be a massive, massive game. So we'll get all your predictions, everything else in between myself and Super Danny Iron. So we'll see you then. Um, so we, I've, I've got a shoot, but uh, as always, you've been beautiful. We've been TMA. It's good night from Moudinho. It's good night from Dino. Give away it again. <laughs> it's good way. night from Darren. <laughs> good night from the pitch. <laughs>